What's up, guys? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting, titillating, and exciting, titillating edition of Radical Rockin' Record Reviews with me, your host, Wild Ride bassist Mick Watkins. And guys, today, September 10th, 2020, we are going to do a little celebration today, guys, of not only my favorite live hard rock heavy metal album of all time, but my absolute favorite piece of music in the history of musics, my favorite album of all time. We're talking about the band that took the hottest band in the world, Kiss, from being an obscure opening band from New York, opening for badass bands such as Black Sabbath and Blue Oyster Cult, Uriah Heep, Bob Seger. It took them from being an opening band to being BAM! On top and blowing everybody away, killing everybody on the road, and it turned this band right here. In my opinion, the greatest American hard rock band of all time, KISS. It turned them into a global phenomenon. And 45 years ago, September 10th, 1975, this album, Kiss Alive, was released. So today I thought I would talk about this record, what it means to me, and just gush all over it, guys. Gush all over it. I got my cool Kiss Alive shirt. This is, in fact, the very first show where I talk about my favorite band of all time, Kiss. Talking about my favorite album of all time, Kiss Alive. And like I said, this album was released back in 1975. You got Kiss at their peak, at their music, at their heaviest in the 70s with the original lineup. I mean, back then, dude, I don't care what anybody says. Back then, you had the Zeppelin fans. You had people, people still say, oh, Kiss sucks. Kiss isn't that good. Their songs are simple. Uh, they aren't talented. They aren't good players. You know what I have to say? right here set and spin because this album totally proves that every kind of insult or any kind of put down towards this band it just proves that it's all just a big stinky pile of dog shit and kiss is in fact a juggernaut and a force to be reckoned with especially on this amazing album right here 1975's alive i mean just do just look at it Got Gene Simmons singing some of his best songs. You know your man is working hard. He's worth a deuce. Cold Gin Parasite, which both those songs, Cold Gin Parasite, penned by the Space Ace Ace Freely. But nonetheless, Gene Simmons, let me go rock and roll. Watching you. She. Rock and the Rock and Roll National Anthem. A song that, you know, even though I've heard it, and we've all heard it a million times in our lives, I still don't get sick of hearing the good kick-ass version with the awesome Ace Frehley solo of Rock and Roll All Night on here. But you got Gene Simmons at his demonic best. You got the star child, Paul Stanley. Let me hear you people. Now there's a lot of you people telling me backstage before that I heard some of you people like to drink vodka and orange juice. Why, yeah, yeah. let me hear you. Come on, people. Why, yeah, yeah. The star child Paul Stanley kicking ass at his rhythm guitar, his crazy killer vocals on songs. I mean, Strutter got to choose from my favorite track on this album and one of my all time favorite Kiss songs Firehouse. Get the Firehouse! Come on and come out and love me. She's a dancer, a romancer. I'm a Capricorn, she's a cancer. Dude, so I'm sorry to have taken so long. It must have been a bitch. What is going on? 100,000 years rock bottom. Then you got back here on the drums. The primal cat, the cat man, beating on his drums in a tribal rhythm and beat. 
the Catman Peter Chris, dude. Killed it with his Brooklyn accented screams and just aggression on songs like You got nothing to lose, you got got nothing to lose, oh, baby. Come on, baby. You got fucking black diamond out on the streets for the love. Battle down on down. Bitches all let me go. And the man himself right here, which I'm going to talk about in a second. My favorite member of KISS, and like I stated on the last video, my favorite guitar player of all time, the Space Ace, Ace Fraley. Just killing it with his melodic, thought-out, well-composed solos, dude. Ace's solos, especially back in the 70s. As many fans have said, many um, know, critics have said that Ace's songs were like, Songs within songs, you know what I mean? Each note carefully chosen. It, it's just insane. You listen to some of the solos, like my favorite on him, probably my top song on here, my favorite song, and my favorite Ace Freely solo on this album. Got to choose. Look at that, I can, I can hum the whole damn thing. But anyway, guys, every member of KISS just completely kicking ass. On top of their game, their best album, and my favorite album of all time. But anyway, what I'm holding right here is the gorgeous Mint Condition 2014 vinyl reissue. I'm telling you, dude. Go out and get this. Go out and get this. Amazon's got it. I think really cheap, maybe 25 to maybe 20 to 25 dollars right now. But I have this copy, my all-time favorite album. Got it on double CD right there that came out in the 1997 remastered set. But right here, I want to show you guys something. My most prized possession in my entire collection of music, Kiss-wise, any artist. My most prized possession, my original copy, okay, that my cousin Boone gave me. When I found it sitting, the, sitting in this old dusty stack of vinyl in his garage. It's probably back in like spring of 97. I was there with my dad, my brother, Boone. We were sitting outside and hanging out. Boone and my dad were probably, you know, I was 12 at the time, so I didn't even notice this. But my dad and Boone were probably, <coughs> hey man, hey but take a toe. Oh, thanks man. <coughs> probably token up on some fucking weed. Oh. But anyway, I went digging through this record set. You know, because at the time, spring 1997, I had probably been a KISS fan for about five or six months or so. You know? And I seen this big, giant stack of records in his garage. And, uh, and I said, dude, I wonder if he's got any KISS. He's got to have some KISS. So I went digging, I went digging, and finally, maybe after four, five, or six records I picked up, Sitting right on top was this, my original copy of Kiss Alive. And if you look close, last year I saw him live in concert in Lexington at the Manchester Music Hall. And I bought um, the meet and greet and went backstage and met Ace Freely. I met him twice, but this time I had to get him to autograph my OG Kiss Alive copy, my most prized possession in the collection. And look at that. Ace Frehley autograph and if you know if you've watched him in like interviews lately and stuff Ace Frehley is just he's fucking deaf dude he's completely deaf I mean just think of what Ace has done over the last 45 close to 50 years of rocking out every night there's that solo but anyway Jamming out, rocking, shredding, kick-ass, killer, melodic leads in front of giant walls of Marshall Stacks for 45, almost 50 years. That shit will take a toll on um, your ears right here. It'll totally ruin your hearing. So with that, you know, being said is if you ever meet Ace and you're sitting next to him, a little word of advice from a guy that's met him twice. Talk really loud. 
Say hi, Ace. Nice to meet you. Killer show. Kick ass. Thanks for the great music. And then he'll say like some shit like, Oh, well, thanks, man. Nice to meet you. What's your name? And I told him. I said, my name's Mick. Still didn't hear me right. And if you look, well, he got it close. At least he got the ick right. He wrote, To Rick. But I can't get pissed off. That's classic ace humor. And a sure as hell sign showing that he is deaf. But this right here, anyway, crazy awesome story. That night was an epic party with my old buddy, John Bon Joey, Joseph Bonds. He'll tell you all about it when he's a guest on here one day. But anyway, this is the copy, guys. This is the copy that I saw in the garage at my cousin Boone's house. It just blew me away, dude. I remember picking this album cover up and just being like, holy fucking shit, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen in my life. I mean, being in a kid, you know, and growing up on Batman, X-Men, Ghostbusters, scary movies, superheroes and shit. You see something like this? You see something like this? It's basically like fucking Batman and the X-Men with guitars, dude. Singing these awesome killer hard rock songs with these perverted ass lyrics about you know sticking it in a chick's butt and trying to get her to do some anal sex Black Diamond a song about hookers and shit on the streets of New York prostitutes on the streets of New York and rocking and rolling and all night long and drinking cold gin and just fucking being hotter than hell Man, just the coolest thing and I remember just picking this album up and opening the gatefold for the first time. You know, seeing the cool notes, reading the notes, you know, that showed off the different characters of the, you know, of them. You had Gene Simmons' note is all kind of vicious and, uh, oh, where's Gene's? Gene's is, oh shit, Gene's is right here. You know, he's talking about dear victims and, you know, just being kind of demonic and being kind of evil and lurid and creepy. Then you got... Paul Stanley's, which says, my dear lovers, he's all like the ultimate rock star and ladies man, he's all about love and passion and shit. Then you, you know, there's Peter right into the cat people, you know, just being cool, street kid, Brooklyn, New York, the cat, the man with nine lives, then Ace, I gotta love Ace this dude, you know. Now, just talking about being all spaced out and, you know, he's new to Earth and his boots keeping gravity on Earth's, you know, grounds and stuff. You know, just so cool. Dude. So cool reading those notes for the first time. And then seeing these. Look at this. My first time ever seeing these images of the first Kiss album, Hotter Than Hell and Dressed to Kill and just being enamored. You know, turning it around, reading the awesome song titles, you know, and seeing a packed act of the rim Cobo Hall in Detroit, Michigan. Seeing all these cool kids, the kill, you know, the cool ass kids holding the sign. Dude, this was just, I mean, like even before I went home and popped this vinyl down on the turntable, just this jacket alone was just blowing my mind. So thankfully my cousin Boone said, dude, you really like that, don't you? And I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I love it. He's like, you know what? You can go ahead and have it. So thankfully, I took this thing home, okay? Walked in the front door of my grandparents' house. And growing up, um, my grandparents were super religious. I'm talking about Bible, Thumper, Southern Baptist, the whole nine yards, all right? They used to like get on me because they thought Batman was evil looking. The Batman looked like the freaking devil. Now, like, this is mostly my, uh, uh, my grandmother. But, you know, oh, well, you don't want that. He looks like the damn devil. Phew. Yeah, if you thought Batman was the fucking devil, wait until she's seen this. So anyway, being all proud and excited, I walk in and I go, Nana, look at this. Look what Boone gave me. She, look at that. That's pure evil. Oh, my God. They look like the damn devil. And she yanked it out of my hands. And I was just crushed. I was afraid she was going to take my kiss record and throw it in the fucking garbage. So I was just bummed out, you know, and I was telling uh, my dad, I was like, Dad, I have to get that back. What's she going to do? Throw it in the trash? Destroy it? Rip it up? Cut it up? Break the records? 
But anyway, later on that night, maybe around 11.30 at midnight, my Nana went to bed. And I snuck upstairs very quietly, shh, very quietly, and opened the knob on the door. And she was sound asleep. I could hear her snoring. I got down on my hands and knees. And I kind of looked around. I kind of looked around. Where was it at? Where's my kiss record? She had it stashed under her fucking bed. She had this record under her bed. I felt around and I looked and I grabbed it. I was like, there it is. There's my kiss record. So I grabbed it, got my ass up fast as hell, closed the door, ran downstairs, ran downstairs to the basement to where we had this old 1970s turntable, which I still wish I had. I mean, I still have it, but it doesn't work anymore. But the whole setup was awesome. It's kind of wood grain shelf with the old school speakers and shit. It was such an awesome setup. And I remember sliding the vinyl out, laying it down on this turntable, firing up the, um, the stereo. The crowd builds. It real exciting. And then there he is. You want it the best? You got it. The hottest out of the world. Piss! And fucking Deuce just comes on rocking and roaring. And I remember just sitting there. Just sitting there, taking the booklet out, you know what I mean? Shit. Another cool thing about Kiss Alive. So as I'm sitting there, 12 year old Mick, just sitting there listening to this awesome album. And I'm sitting there and I'm staring at this booklet. Just staring at it. Because, you know, you know, this time I was a young kid, 12 years old, in 1997. I had never seen Kiss actually move around. I'd never seen any of the music videos. I'd just seen pictures of them in Metal Edge magazine, Hit Parader, different things like that. I'd never seen Kiss move around. So as I'm sitting here and I'm listening to this Deuce, Firehouse, Got to Choose, Parasite, I'm sitting here and I'm staring at this booklet. Just imagine what my heroes would do during these songs. Fucking Gene and Peter, you know. And at the time, I remember cutting up these pictures out of the book and taping them on my bedroom wall. I remember, on my side um, of the room, I had Ace and Gene above my bed. And then on uh, brother's side, he had Paul and Peter because he's a drummer and he's a huge Peter Chris fan. But you know, we used to just you know rock out. He would jam on his air drums and I'd air, you know, guitar the fuck out of this album, dude. But look at that cool booklet, man. Gene and Peter. Look at Gene looking wicked, dude. The coolest look Kiss ever had. You know, this was before all the merchandise and the kitty toys. And when, you know, this was just Kiss still at that dark, kind of gritty streets of New York, kind of evil black and silver vibe. I mean, this is it right here. Some of the coolest looking shit I've ever seen in my life. You know, just listening to these tunes. And staring at those pictures, you know, I mean, staring at those cool pictures. I love the picture where Ace is just kind of engulfed in the blue light. And Gene has the red light around him with the bass and the, and the bat wings up. And the spooky candelabra and the blood spitting. And there's Peter and the smoke. There's the picture of Gene almost looking like he's getting ready to attack Ace and bite his neck and draw blood and shit. That middle picture, man, I'd love to have a poster of that. That original Boutwell, I think that was the very first poster. Gene spitting fire, and oh man, that picture. This is the picture that made me want to play guitar right there. That picture right there of Ace doing that gnarly ass back bend. That's actually uh, taking a picture at the Winterland performance. But dude, as a 12 year old kid, Raised on Batman, X-Men, Ghostbusters, scary movies. You know, that shit was fiction, you know. That wasn't real. These guys were real. Flesh and blood. Look at that cool fucking picture of Ace, man. These guys were it. They were like gods among men to me. And, you know, honestly, all these years later, 23 years later, they still are. And I remember having this epic picture hanging on my bedroom wall also. Just cool shit, man. Cool shit. Kiss was then, and they still are, gods among men, you know.
and all the nonsense about Kiss's songs aren't great. Kiss sucks. They aren't good players. You know what I gotta say? Like I said earlier, fuck off, dude. Kiss rules. Kiss's songs. If Kiss had had shit songs, Kiss wouldn't have lasted. Okay? Kiss wouldn't have lasted for 46, 47 years. All right? There's been plenty of bands. Like, let's say, for instance, not to offend anybody, uh, but let's say a band like Guar. You know, they're still around, you know, but dude, name me some of their songs. Tell me some of their songs. Hum me some of their solos. Can't. And I'm not trying to shit on Guar or anything. But I'm just saying, there's bands. There's been bands like Guar. There's been bands like Mushroom Head that have gimmicks that look cool, that have great stage shows. But you know what? They don't have the Kiss has the awesome music to back it up. And every one of these dudes, stellar musicians. Okay, you don't have to be fucking Yingbei Malmsteam and just do a bunch of mindless shredding and fucking all kinds of millions of notes in a solo to be good. Okay, okay. I, I would to quote Gene Simmons. Well, loosely. I would rather hit a simple A chord that just cracks your ribs and hear some solo that sounds like an angry B. I mean, you just want to kill that thing. Shut up. That was a quote from the Extreme Close Up. See, I'm a huge Kiss geek. I know this shit. But guys, this album is turning 45 years old today. And I was just wanting to gush on it, talk about the love I have for this band. And believe me, if you're digging on KISS, this will not be the last KISS episode here on Radical Rocket Record Reviews. This is just the beginning, because now we're just popping the, popping the top on this keg and prepare to join me in drink after drink after drink as we go down this journey of kiss and my love for this band. So guys, I don't want to stay on here really long, but I tell you what, Thank you for everybody that has been supporting the channel. We're, I mean, the likes are happening. The subscriptions are happening. So, look, you know what? If you like this video, if you like the other videos I've done, hit the subscribe button, like these videos, and help me spread the word of radical rock and record reviews, hard rock and heavy metal. And check out my awesome killer band, Wild Ride. Official Wild Ride on Instagram. On Facebook, just look up Wild Ride, Wild Ride. Replace the eyes with Wise, and you'll see them. Neon bass. Tommy Blitz on shredded left-handed lead guitar. Michael Kid Vicious on drums. And on lead vocals and lead guitar, Chief. So guys, thank you. And look, you know what today? Get in your car, turn on your home stereo, and crank the fuck out of what is, in my opinion, Mick Watkins, Dick Watkins, crank this son of a bitch the greatest hard rock heavy metal album ever laid to wax CD, 8 track, cassette tape, iPod, Spotify, blah 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 blah. All that nonsense. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Celebrate Kiss Alive 45. Until next time, rock and roll. Peace guys.